What's up guys, Mitchell Watts with Town & Country TV and today is an extra special day for me specifically because my F-150 lighting has just shown up. And in today's video, we're not going to do a normal review of the vehicle. That's gonna come at a later date, but what we're going to show you is what a real world actual long distance trip is going to look like in the F-150 Lightning because as a matter of fact, I'm actually leaving for the beach first thing tomorrow morning. So I'm going to go ahead and pack this vehicle up. We're going to weigh it. Oh, you know what? In fact, I even weighed it already. As you can see right here, we actually have already weighed this vehicle before we added a small modification to it. And so that way we know what this thing weighed ahead of time. We're going to load it up with all the stuff and then we're going to show you what kind of real world range you can get uh, on this vehicle and also show you what the actual charging infrastructure is like. Uh, so let's go ahead and fill up the truck with all the stuff we'll need to go on vacation. But first things first, let's show you what the cargo capacity is going to look like. So once again, you've got your mega power front, <laughs> is what Ford calls this. This is that massive, massive front trunk space that gives you the ability to store stuff up here. I was actually charging the very camera that I am using right now using that USB-C cord and it was able to get me plenty of juice on the way home from uh, the dealership. And as you can see, you've also got your mobile charger that I haven't even had a chance to open up as well as this little area right here works perfectly as a cooler. So this is going to be a very much utilized section of storage in the vehicle, but there's another big section that a lot of people don't realize. And that is going to be the bed of the vehicle. The F-150 Lightning shares the exact same bed as a normal F-150. So it allows for things like this roll and lock bed cover. This is the roll and lock M series bed cover. I love it because it is a it is a hard top through and through. It does have this uh, uh, urethane, or I'm not sure exactly what this is made out of, but it does have a vinyl looking top to it to kind of finish off the look, but it is metal all the way through. And the cool part about this, by the way, I'll have this linked down in the description if you guys want. Uh, that link will actually have a discount code automatically applied to it. And we ship these things to the lower 48 states for you guys at free of charge. So I, what I love about it is that it does not take up a a whole lot of space in the bed of the truck. Look how small that drum is. Uh, it's really, really nice, especially if you're going to be loading up a whole lot of luggage in the back of the F-150 Lightning. So now you not only have this bed of the truck and this massive space to store stuff, but you also have that front trunk space. So without further ado, let's go ahead and load this thing down. Believe it or not, that is not everything that we have to pack on this little beach trip. Uh, this is just the stuff that's going to make it in the bed of the truck. And uh, I will tell you, it's pretty obvious now that I am not a world-class packer, but that's okay because I have got this, the mega power frunk. And uh, yeah, let's finish packing up the rest of the stuff. A little bit of capacity that I've never had before. And there you have it. It has got everything filled inside of this mega power frunk. What's going to be interesting though, is to see if it actually closes. So let's take a look. Ooh, that's going to be close. I think we're going to be okay. And we are perfect, but there's another cool feature that I have to show you about this and the stuff that we have in the bed of the truck. The F-150 Lightning has a really cool feature called onboard scales. When you tap on this, it gives you a little bit of a disclaimer, but once you hit continue, you can see that this vehicle has a weight capacity of 1725 for the cargo and the passengers. And as you can see, the vehicle thinks we're in perfect green situation, but let's do this. What we're going to do during this video is also weigh the vehicle again. So that way you can kind of see what does everything weigh with me, my wife, my three kids, all the luggage, the bed cover, everything. And we're also going to measure out the efficiency on the F-150 Lightning. So a quick travel update. We've done 106.8 miles. I tried to clock it in at right at 100 miles even to give you guys that update, but I overlooked it. Anyways, we're doing 2.1 miles per kilowatt hour, and you'll notice that I've got the intelligent adaptive cruise control turned on uh, with the speed sign recognition. And basically what that means is no matter what the speed limit is, it'll automatically add a tolerance of five miles an hour over whatever the speed limit is. That's kind of where I feel comfortable. So if the speed limit is 70, it does 75. Uh, I will also tell you the big screen that we have here 
Um, that navigation system, I am typically a Waze kind of a guy, but the uh, navigation system, I'm forcing myself to use it in the Ford because it's got a little bit more integration. And notice how when I get a text message, it automatically plopped over to the the wireless Apple CarPlay. But anyway, uh, the navigation system on the Ford setup is so far so good. Hopefully, hopefully these chargers are not out of order because yeah, we've got 46 miles worth of range left. As you can see, we drove four hours and 16 minutes nonstop, 223 miles. Uh, yeah, so there you go. You can kind of compare what the overall range estimate was plus the 223 and the four, 46 miles worth of left of range. So let's get it plugged up. And we'll check on the charger connecting to vehicle. And for reference, it is 12.05 uh, by my watch here. It says 105. Uh, I don't know if we traveled over <laughs> time zone or not, but I'm going to go ahead and um, use the restroom because apparently the range on this Lightning <laughs> has got more range than my bladder does. So we just got through with the restroom and also getting some snacks. It is now 12.22 and you can see that we are currently at a state of charge of 47%. And so if I go in and take a look at the vehicle, you can either see what's going on here on the dash, or you can also look at the Ford Pass app. So as I try and zoom in here to take a look at it, we're already back up to 48%. Uh, the, the vehicle says that we're trying to get it up to 90%. We're not going for that. We're gonna stop at 80%. Uh, but it's saying that at 109 um, that it'll be completely done with the fast charge. But I guess what I wanted to point out is that currently, right now, uh, once again, 12.23 p.m., from everything from here going forward is the time that is spent extra in charging. Now, keep in mind that the 48% state of charge right now, we would be perfectly fine with leaving right now and, and you know, staying, but I wanna make sure that I've got an 80% charge so I can putz around all over the beach and I don't actually have to worry at all about how much range that I've got. So I'm being a little bit overly cautious, but I could absolutely um, leave right now if I wanted to. So yeah, here are some of the stats that we're looking at on the charging, but we're gonna get it up to 80%. As soon as it hits there, we're gonna stop it and show you exactly how much extra time was quote unquote wasted at the Electrify America here in the Walmart in Shipley, Florida. Keep in mind that our end destination is the restaurant Shunk Gully. We're gonna try that out for the very first time. It's 66 miles away. And based on literally just going into the restroom, getting some snacks, coming back out, I have 146 miles worth of range. So guys, I, I really don't feel like I'm wasting that much time on the charging session. I'm not one of these people that's just trying to push EV, but you know, I really could leave here, have plenty of range, have what, 80 miles worth of range after I get to our final destination. But my wife, I think, is about to uh, record me and make fun of me <laughs> on her Instagram. <laughs> yeah, so I guess what I'm saying is, is that I really haven't wasted that much time up until this point because I could unplug and leave, but I don't know that if that our um, that our condo that we've rented, if they have uh, the ability to, to charge in the parking lot. So I just want to be ultra safe and give it a little bit of an extra boost and get it all the way up to the 80%. And we just hit 80%, and as you can see, it's 1248. Well, I don't know if it's showing up on my phone very well, but it is uh, 1248. We spent roughly, uh, give or take, 26 minutes of optional time to charge the vehicle just a little bit longer. So I wanna show you a couple of different things. You can continue to fast charge on this vehicle uh, a little bit longer if that's something you wanna do. However, it's not advised. After you hit 80%, you have a significant drop off in the rate of charge. And so if you're doing some long distance traveling uh, like we're doing today, 80% uh, is where you wanna stop. But I will tell you, uh, $36.98 is what I have spent on charging in this particular situation. Uh, I can factor in maybe roughly, roughly about a hundred bucks to do the exact same amount of mileage. Um, but anyways, to uh, try and get this vehicle out, to kind of try and get the plug out, you can't get it out because it's fast charging. But this button, that's what that's for. Tap that button, it stops the charge, and then you'll be able to unplug it. Overall, 80% on the dashboard. And as we start this thing up, we now have 238 miles worth of range, which is more than enough range to putz around, uh, around town at the beach and also make it to the restaurant that we're headed to right now. So 
the first night of vacation was an absolute blast. And no, I did not film everything for this vacation because at the end of the day, it is a vacation. However, I will tell you that the Airbnb that we're staying at is nothing special. I mean, in fact, you can probably see it underneath that awning. That is actually where we're staying. And coincidentally, because Ford Motor Company has a really decent, I, I, I was going to say terrible <laughs> at the beginning of this trip, but a pretty decent navigation system, I actually found this particular charger and didn't even know that it existed. And it's literally right across the street from our hotel. And so I was able to set up, now I will tell you, a couple of different things about this Blink setup. This is a Blink charger. Uh, it's not set up on the Ford uh, network, so I can't pay through the Ford Pass. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, real realistically, you do have to download the Blink application, put your credit card information in there, and then you know go through a couple of other steps. I did have issues with the with the app from Blink, not Ford's fault, not the truck's fault, but Blink's fault. Well, I don't even think it was Blink's fault because the, the cell phone reception here is not fantastic. And because I had to activate this charger through a cell phone app I, and I didn't have the best of service, it was kind of giving me fits to get this charger set up. So that's just kind of interesting. But anyways, we have gotten this thing almost back to 100% charge uh, just by letting it charge overnight. I, I really plugged it in later than I probably should have. If I would have plugged it up a little earlier, I would have been fine. But let's take a look at the results of how far I've driven on the uh, Electrify America DC fast charging. So this trip energy is exactly what I wanted to show you. Uh, as you can see, we were doing 2.1 miles per kilowatt hour, uh, 92 miles since the, the DC fast charging that you guys saw us do. And uh, as you can see, 9% of this went to climate use. It's 90 degrees right now, and it is 8.30 in the morning. So it is uh, so, some pretty good hot days, and I'm sure that's gonna have an effect on the battery. If the battery doesn't actually get affected, it's gonna be affected by the climate use. I will tell you though that these windows, I've tinted them. You can see that windshield is not tinted. But these side windows are tinted. They're tinted 15% ceramic, and it's done a really good job of keeping the heat out of the vehicle, but obviously it's not done a perfect job, but it will reduce that climate use. 81% to driving, 7% to accessories. Let me talk about that for a second. I've had my phone plugged in here. My wife's had her phone plugged in. All three kids have had their iPads plugged in. Uh, we are definitely making use out of all of the different ports that the, <laughs> that the F-150 Lightning has to offer. So uh, it's nice that they give you all of that ability. But yeah, that is what we're looking at on the last 92 miles since we did that Electrify America Fast Charge. But now that we're back up to 90 seven percent i'm gonna go ahead and reset this trip meter three days later so the vacation is over we're on the way back and as you can see we are on the interstate and it's got some rain coming down but the cool part is is that blue cruise works even in the rain so i love that and as long as i have my eyes on the road my hands and feet are completely off the gas or accelerator pedal and the steering wheel as well now here's what's cool is we've got 2.2 miles per kilowatt hour now i want to keep in mind Oh, driving range is low. That's okay because we're actually getting very close to the uh, EA charger that we're coming up to here in just a second. But notice we've got 216 miles on the uh, the trip meter since the last charge that we had, which I think was only like 95 or 97. I can't remember because it was quite a few days ago that I filmed that. But notice we've been in the car for over nine hours. So that kind of goes to show you that we have had a significant amount of um stop and go stop and go stop and go in just you know panama city i guess just not not the best place for high speed driving so um it's interesting to see the 2.2 kilowatt miles per kilowatt because before we started this leg stretch on the way back home um man i'm telling you the the miles per kilowatt hour i think it was 1.8 1.9 so it really jumped up to the 2.2 that we have here so anyways we've got 14 miles left until we get to that ea fast charger and we've got 48 miles worth of range with 217.8 miles on this particular charge so what we'll do is fast forward till we get to the charger
And here are the total results of the trip. You've got 231 miles on one single charge. I know that sounds like it's a little bit low, and the reason for that is because we did a whole lot of stop and go, stop and go, stop and go while we were at the beach. In fact, we've been in the car for nine hours and 21 minutes since the last time we have uh, actually charged up. Still have 37 miles worth of range go, but looking at where did the energy go for this particular trip, all on the interstate, as you can see, we did 2.3 miles per kilowatt hour. Uh, that was on pretty much, not interstate, it was interstates, back road, Roads, but that was not the stop and go traffic that I was referring to. Uh, that was the stop and go was while we were actually at the beach, going to dinner, that kind of stuff. But only 5% was for climate, 89% for driving. You can see the accessories and the exterior temperature and what that kind of effect that had on it. Looking at trip two, you can see that 12% was the, uh, the, the climate use. This was the last time that we charged up uh, at that blink station that we showed you guys a little bit earlier. You can see only 75% went to charging as well. So let's go ahead and plug up the vehicle and we're gonna run across the street and get something to eat while this thing is charging. As you can see, it's starting out at a 15% charge, but it shows it's only doing 89 kilowatts, which is interesting because we're using a 350 kilowatt uh, CCS fast charger. And the primary reason is because, oh, we got a little, little Tesla action over here. But yeah, that's, uh, oh, there we go. Now it's dropped up to 154 kilowatts. That is one of the reasons that if I'm not blocking someone else, I, I'd prefer to use those higher kilowatt because you do have peaks that actually go up over 150. I know that the F-150 Lightning is actually rated for 150 kilowatts, but there are some certain times, like uh, pretty consistently right there, we're looking at 154 four kilowatts worth of charging. Um, so pretty nice to see that Ford is exceeding what they state. After plugging in the truck, we walked over to Sonic, grabbed some food, sat back in the truck and ate it. And let me tell you, by the time I got through eating my Sonic, which this is not a pay, <laughs> it just happens to be the restaurant that was close enough. Uh, but after I got through eating my Sonic restaurant, you can see the state of the charge is right at 78 percent so realistically speaking i mean yeah i know it's been on the charge for 40 minutes but by the time it took us to walk over there get our food sonic was really slow today i will i will say that uh, but by the time we got our food sat down and ate it it is pretty much the exact time that it is to leave and the cool part is is 12 dollars 80 to fill this thing back up with a full charge, or I say a full charge, 80% is the recommended max because you don't want to uh, go above 80% on fast charge because charging on a fast scale above 80% is not good for the battery at all. So yeah, there we go, 79%, $13.12, not a bad price point for, uh, in fact, you know what's interesting is this is actually cheaper than it was to do the slow charging down in Florida. So that goes to show you that the cost to charge is all over the map when you're not charging at home. But the good news is if you are charging at home, it is a pretty consistent cost to charge every single day or however often you need to. But notice how as we dropped over 80%, now we're looking at 60 kilowatts worth of current charge speed. So it's time to go ahead and unplug this thing, finish up the rest of the road trip, and I've got some very interesting things coming for you here in just a second. And the surprise is that we are going to weigh this truck before and after, and uh, I've got those numbers for you. So it's really interesting, and I'm sorry that it is so loud here at the truck stop. But anyway, so there's a couple of different numbers I wanna go over with you guys. This particular F-150 has a gross vehicle weight rating of 8,550 pounds as it is equipped. Now, before I tell you what this thing weighs completely loaded down with all of the vacation gear, I do want to let you know that we weighed this back a couple of days ago. I wanted to know what the actual weight of the vehicle was completely bone stock form. And that weight was 6,740 pounds. Now that I've added the bed cover, uh, the window tent, and all of the stuff, the total gear the total weight of everything is 8,020 pounds. And so as you can see, we are just a little more than 500 pounds shy of the overall weight rating of this particular vehicle. Very interesting to see all of these different efficiency numbers with a vehicle that's very close to being maxed out. Now that the road trip is completely over, vacation's over, we're back home in the same place that this video began. And I wanna kind of give you guys a little bit of my recap 
on driving an EV for the very first time on a real long distance road trip. Uh, the first thing I'll say is that range anxiety is still a real thing. Uh, if it wasn't for that one particular charger, that blink charger, that we would have been able to charge in the middle of the beach trip, I would have had a lot more anxiety than I did. I was really at ease that I found that place, and, um, and once again, that was a complete accident. But if it wasn't for that, I probably would be a nervous wreck the whole time. Am I going to run out of range? Am I going to run out of range? And and I know that's just something I've got to get used to um, and get comfortable with, I guess is the better, better way of doing it. Um, but realistically, the truck has got plenty of range. And the main thing that I wanted to test, and nothing super scientific, but does the range, is it heavily affected by the amount of payload that you have in the vehicle? We all know um, there, there's a lot of different videos out there talking about towing tests and how far you can get on a specific charge when you're towing something behind you. I think what I have realized on this particular trip is that the weight is not the biggest concern. It's really the, the aerodynamics. Having that big parachute of a trailer behind you is going to have more of an effect on you than just having some stuff in the front trunk and then also in the actual bed of the vehicle as well. So guys, that is a little bit of a look of a real world uh, vacation style of a, almost kind of a vlog, I guess you will. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already done so, make sure you are subscribed to the channel with the bell notification turned on so you don't miss a single video. Peace.